Good evening, Pahrump. I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host of the Independent Doctors of Pahrump, and we have a special announcement tonight, uh, along with Dr. Christensen. Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? Hope everybody had a happy Thanksgiving. Dr. Bill is going to be joining the Wellness Center, and we're happy to have him. He was working at Mountain Valley Professional Group, um, and as you know, the hospital sold, correct? Yes. And they basically told Dr. Bill and his crew, you got 30 days, so we're happy to have you. Well, I'm happy to be here. Yeah, and uh, so um, maybe you tell us a little about you were you came here as a locums, correct? Yes, I came in January of this year as a locum tenens from Western New York. Okay. And where it's nice and snowy at this point in the year, <laughs> and cold. I was back there over the Thanksgiving holidays. No bet. Internal medicine for many years, okay. hospice and palliative care, all of 2015. So a lot of different interests. Good. Good. And you've got quite a few patients. You've been there for, you inherited uh, Van Wagner's group, correct? Yes. Yeah. When she left, right. uh, we got uh, her practice, wonderful people there, and then added our own. And it's burgeoned quite quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so for all those people that were leaving, sometimes they left my practice, sometimes they left healthcare partners, and you were then now the other independent doctor yes. catching all those people. So. We're happy to join forces yes, and be very nice. uh, give the support of all of what we do and what you do. And I think it's going to be a great mix, right? Yeah, we're excited about it. It, it opens up some new avenues, which mm -hmm. is really great. It allows us to see and to deliver more services to the prompt patients here in the Valley. And we're excited about having yeah, Dr. I, Bill I, on. And as we start to have more, more patients, I mean, um, you know, what I like about this whole idea is that at the end of the day, well, you may not like me, and I don't know why, but no. But, uh, <laughs> but some people I haven't heard a thing. Yeah, no. And then, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like now you got another person that you can see, and if I'm not there, that's very capable, excellent, people love you, and I've heard nothing but good things about you, so that's great. And uh, so we're, we're just really excited about that. I think we have Louie on the phone. Louie. Hello, Doc. How are you tonight? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Listen, I got a question now. Uh, I take vitamins. I take like, uh, like cinnamon. I take uh, black cherry, elderberry, acai, papaya, garlic. Can any of that stuff hurt you, or can you take too much of it where it hurts you, or is there anything like that that you know can have a bad you know effect on your health? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Number one, those aren't vitamins; those are herbs, Louis, and anything in excess can cause some problems. And that so, it, it, as with anything out there, less is probably better. Uh, that having uh, been said, what I try Louis. to do. I don't take them every day. I'll like skip a day. In other words, like I'll take it like once every other day. Is that advisable? Well, I think that's reasonable. Uh, we get concerned about kidneys and liver if you take anything like that in excess. But you're talking about stimulating the pancreas, preventing gout, helping osteoarthritis with the mixture you've got. Uh, it seems like you made some good choices. Well. Oh, okay, thank you very much. Uh, that was my question. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks and, for the question, Louie. And I, I think it's, it's what, I, what I tell patients to do is that, you know, patients will bring in all their vitamins, and I, I get a lot of bleed over between, you know, different types of vitamins. The, the thing that I find is that even though no one, nobody really likes the government at some point, but they have those USDA, uh, yes. you know, the minimum requirements. So some of these, like, you got to be careful of the fat-soluble vitamins. Those are the ones that are really important, the D, the E, the K, the A, mm -hmm. and, and those, those, those will hang in your system. So when you take a vitamin E and it says 400% of the daily requirements, and if you take it every day, you're taking four times the dose every day. So that's going to accumulate. Mm -hmm. It's going to accumulate in your fat. So that creates a problem. So you have to be very careful. Vitamin A is the one that you really need to be careful of because it, it does cause some problems with pseudoterumor cerebri, which is a real problem in your in your ocular. So be careful of those fat-soluble vitamins that hang around for water-soluble vitamins are very safe. Let's talk about D real quick, real quick Doc. When, when I was studying nutrition in school, 40 international units was what they required mm -hmm. vitamin D. And now they're up to 5,000 units yes. of vitamin D. Well, we check vitamin Ds, and you yes, probably check them. You, you know, you check them in. And there's been a lot of controversy about that. What's high, what's low. The, the lab value is at 30. Um, but 
really, I don't consider it low until it's 10 or less. Mm -hmm. That's really, really low. And you are going to suffer a lot of problems with low vitamin D, not just bones, but immune system, Muscled fatigue, colon health, um, all those other things that are really important for vitamin D. Not to mention the fact when you get a cold, or flu, that's one of the people reason people uh, say that you get more colds in the in the winter time is because no sun. No sun. Covered up. So your vitamin D goes down, so your immune system comes down. But I, who knows? I mean, I, I think it's because uh, you know they get summertime colds too. So and I think the summertime ones are the worst. So ah, uh, we got Uncle Ray. Ray. Hey, Ray. Ray the Flagman here. Hey, uh, now that you got Dr. Bill, is it guaranteed every Monday night you're going to have a live show? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. I've been yeah, but it's dependent on me that you're in good shape. Every Monday I tune in and watch the repeats. I always listen to the repeats because I'm on every show, and a lot of stuff that I hear a second time, it seems to come home. You know, I'm saying, yeah. oh, I didn't understand it the first time around. Just as long as you're not calling in on the repeat, you're good, Ray. <laughs> hey, for a while there, before they put that uh, ribbon on the bottom, I was, and I kept getting the fax machine. <laughs> what are you doing over at that 46? You know, it's really crazy. I'm finding out a lot about this practice, Ray, this evening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I have a couple questions here. First of all, I want to... Uh, applaud uh, Chuck Augustine. He gave me a tape on these chemtrails, and believe me, there's something to it. People say conspiracy theory, not so. They're dropping stuff, aluminum, barium, and strontium on people to see uh, about changing the weather and that, and it's affecting people's health. Even in Hawaii, they're doing it. Doc uh, Reiner, I think you've got a copy of that tape. Take a little time and watch at least part, at least part of it, okay. and you'll see what it's all about, because it's really scary stuff. And even Congress, it seems they don't know about what's going on. This is like a, uh, something to do with HARP changing the weather, and they're affecting a lot of people. It's causing people health problems, and it's not only in the United States, all around the world. So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, I want to ask a question that you're going to say, well, why is he asking this question? You know, everybody uh, takes laxatives, laxatives that in order to have uh, uh, regular bowel movements. Is there some exercise people can take that would help instead of, yes. you know, taking uh, over-the-counter laxatives? Is there something you can do? I know Dr. Christensen has a lot to do with, with exercise and things like that. If you could point that out, and I'll give a call later in the show if you guys aren't getting calls, but I think tonight is going to be a hot night for you. Mm. Thanks, thanks for the question, Ray. Okay. Yeah, any time you, you take the time to strengthen your core muscles across your, your pelvis and strengthen up the back your lower back muscles, and I have very good results with people that are constipated by just manipulating the... Uh, upper lumbars and the you know for the pudendal plexus that supplies the mm -hmm. uh, yep. the bowels you know i have people come in and go you know i i had a bowel movement you know and it's like okay that, that, that's great <laughs> thanks know, for sharing right? hear that you know <laughs> too much information but it, you know what those nerves need to be stimulated you need <clears throat> to be active you need to get out and move um you know people complain of chronic pain but they never get up and move you know, they never right. get up and move the joints and get the synovium moving in and around they just the joints. Work through the pain. Yeah, and um, so and that goes for your bowels. If, I mean, if you you want to have regular regular bowel movements, make sure you're getting the roughage that you need. Make sure that you're getting the exercise that you need, and make sure you're getting the rest that you need. It's just a lifestyle. And folks. the fluids too, very important. The fluids are very important. Yeah, the colon's job is to absorb. Uh, water and I tell that story about the uh, nurse uh, they were on a yacht they were in the sea right water mm -hmm. everywhere nowhere to drink how did they not die of dehydration they gave themselves salt water enemas yeah mm -hmm. and because the, the colon absorbed the the water but leave the salt behind yes. mm -hmm. so its job is it's like a sponge is to suck all that water out so when people get older obviously decreased motility of, of the bowels is general when they take opioids for pain um, they take any type of of muscle relaxant, anything like that. They, sometimes they take medication. I think medication plus lack of activity and diet change probably accounts for most of it. How do you um, do? But uh, what do you think? Well, don't you think we also, as physicians, take people off a number of medications? We should. The uh, statistics show that anybody that's on eight or more medications is 100% likely to have at least some side effect, constipation being one of the most yeah. common. Mm -hmm. So dragging people off unnecessary medications is uh, 
a constant task in the office. Yeah, it is. And then duplicate medications going through the medication mm -hmm. list. That's why we want patients to bring all the medications in the office, um, yeah. you know, all the time so that we can see what you're taking and, and, and duplicate because our medication air records are, are should be updated, but like everything else, they're not perfect. So we want to always reconcile yeah. the medication. So it's just good practice for you as a patient to make sure you haul your medicines into the doctor just every time. Just take your camera and take a picture of what you're taking. Well, you could. Or take your receipts from from the yep. store and bring those in you don't have to haul every pill um, and I and and the other thing is true for controlled medications I wouldn't want you taking all of your controlled medications in your right. car so right. then a chance of being lost or stolen and that creates another problem but um, you know it, there are other uh, things but you know incontinence of, of the bladder is a big problem because you take a smooth muscle relaxant and those basically uh, do that oh, we're gonna go to break huh? yeah, we're having break such time. a good show we forgot we'll be right back time flies talk about constipation fun. right Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Reiner, your host of The Independent Doctors of Pahrump, a TV show that airs Monday night on Channel 46. I want to remind you that I am a practicing physician in Pahrump, and I'm an independent practitioner, which means I am not bought by any insurance company or corporate medicine. We provide the highest level of care. We have nurse practitioners. We have other physicians, specialists who come to our office. Please come visit me. I'm at 1316 East Calvada here in the heart of Pahrump. Thank you.